Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the Thinking Crypto channel. Please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Guys, Bitcoin has crossed over 13,500, so making its way upwards, up uh, you know 14.15% from a 7-day perspective and 5% from a 24-hour perspective. So as I stated, since this rally had started from the PayPal news, which was very bullish, let this rally prove itself. Let's see if it continues to build uh, higher highs and higher lows, right? And we work our way back over 14,000, then to 15 and onward. So looking great there. Now I want to talk about XRP, Ripple, and the SEC, because all signs are pointing to Jay Clayton being the roadblock for XRP getting adoption by U.S. banks uh, to start using for cross-border payments. The reason being is that XRP has not been definitively categorized as not a security by the SEC. Jay Clayton has stated that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities. And now this is getting a lot of uh, attention and it's probably due because Ripple's due to Ripple's Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO, going on national TV and drumming up a lot of noise, right? And that's that's why I said in videos before, it's good that he's doing that. You got to put the pressure. Well, guys, here's a report from Breitbart on the topic. Now, this is not a political video. I'm not talking about Trump or, or, or advocating for Trump or any party or anything like that. We're just talking about crypto and what's happening from a regulatory standpoint. So Trump administration concerned SEC dragging its feet on digital currency as China races ahead. There is growing concern uh, within the Trump administration uh, that Securities and Exchange Commission Chairman Jake Clayton is not doing enough to counter growing Chinese dominance in digital currency, which will harm American companies wishing to compete in what is seen as the future of currency. President Trump has moved aggressively throughout his tenure to respond to China's attempts to dominate emerging technologies through a plan called Made in China 2025, which will determine things as critical as the future of the world's manufacturing and communications. Many of you are aware of this geopolitical battle between the two superpowers, right? No, no secrets here. However, a big part of the future and one item that is uh, certainly an important race is that digital currency battle or race, I should say, that CBDC race, right? Where China is ahead. We have seen they're testing their CBDC in the wild, their digital currency, and many of the companies there have the green light to do what they need to do. However, in the United States, once again, there's only that clarity around Bitcoin and Ethereum, not the other digital assets. So that's holding back a lot of companies like Ripple, which leverages a digital asset that is XRP. And Jay Clayton seems to be the one that's holding this back because, as the article alluded to, it's talking about the chairman, Jay Clayton, right? Um, and he's been in meetings with Brian Brooks at the LCC and different things. And we know that crypto mom, Hester Pierce, has been trying, guys. She's been trying year after year. She's putting out uh, different op-eds and articles. She tried to create a, a safe harbor for projects and all that. But as you can imagine, the head, Jay Clayton, if he's not on board, it ain't happening, right? So I think this guy is holding things back. And this ties in very much into, once again, what Brad Garlinghouse has been doing. The guy's been going on Bloomberg, Fox Business, CNBC. He's been talking about the lack of clarity. He even addressed just an hour ago some FUD that people are saying Ripple is trying to flee the United States. He said here, I quote, some have suggested Ripple is fleeing the U.S. Let me unequivocally say this is absolutely not the case. We're a proud U.S.-based company and would like to stay here, but a lack of regulatory clarity and level of playing field is forcing us to evaluate other jurisdictions. So obviously they're gonna still remain in the United States, but they may move their headquarters out if they don't get that regulatory clarity in time, because at the end of the day, they are a business and they have to make money and they have to you know, obviously make a profit to survive. That's simple economics, right? And of course the guys out there are fighting as much as they can, but. Um, you know, in the UK and other countries, uh, Singapore and so forth, there is that regulatory clarity. But Brad did the smart thing of going on TV and just drumming up as much noise as possible. And why am I saying, well, you know, Jay Clayton is the linchpin hero. He's the one because of the breadcrumbs. In August, 
XRP is not a security, or argues U.S. Congressman Tom Emmer. Why would he come out and say that? And this will happen on a webinar with other people from the blockchain and crypto industry. Brad Garlinghouse was on there. Why would a congressman come out and say, let me be clear, XRP is not a security? Why would he do that? Why would the former chairman of the CFTC, Chris Giancarlo, write an op-ed in June stating XRP is more like an alternative currency than a security? Why would he do that? And he did this in um, his op-ed was in Forbes. I mean, or excuse me, not Forbes, but the uh, IFLR. Why would he come out and say that? That's because that's the roadblock. That is what Ripple is waiting for. And Brian Brooks from the uh, OCC has been trying to make things work here. He just uh, at the beginning of October was on a webinar with Jake Clayton called The Two Sides of the American Coin. And I think Brian is trying to put Jake or try to get Jake Clayton to change his mind here. And obviously the Trump administration is worried about it because Jay is the one holding it up. Now, why would he be doing that? Why? And it's not just about XRP. It's, it's about Propy. It's about VeChain. It's about all the other projects, right? Why only give clarity to Bitcoin and Ethereum? Well, I believe Jay has a lot of Wall Street connections. And that connection, of course, is to the traditional financial markets. And as you can imagine, those folks don't want this to happen. They don't want crypto and digital assets to take off where it's kind of a more open playing field for everybody. Remember what I always talk about, guys, where you can be in any country. You could be in a country in Africa, you've been in Alaska, you could be uh, in Australia, wherever, somewhere in Europe. And if you have internet connection, a mobile phone, you can get access to this asset class. These guys don't like that, and especially if they don't have their bags filled as yet, right? So just just a, a, look at this line here. I'll read it for you. The Wall Street connections that Mr. Clayton cultivated as a Sullivan and Cromwell partner have led Democrats, including Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, to question whether he'll be tough a tough regulator. The SEC is responsible for crafting and enforcing regulations governing U.S. equity markets and operations of hedge funds, traders, and banks. He's got a lot of connections to Wall Street, as the article stated. So as you can imagine, they it's got it's probably hard for him to to do that because of his connections. But he can't stop this train, guys. He can't stop it. This is the future. The, the, the disruption is already happening, and the pressure is on. Uh, that's why Steve Mnuchin, under the Trump administration, brought Brian Brooks over from Coinbase to head up the OCC and gave banks the green light to custody crypto. And Trump certainly wants to beat China as much as possible. And uh, digital currencies is one of those element, uh, items, right, that they want to beat the China on. So pretty clear as day what's happening here. And like I said, very smart of Brad Garlinghouse to go on TV, drum up as much noise. This guy's been <laughs> Fox business everything, right? And I think Ripple is going to continue to do that. We saw Chris Larson speak out about it as well. And... Um, we will, I think we'll, the pressure will set in and uh, Jay Clayton will be forced, will be forced to give the green light to XRP and not just XRP, but other digital assets. Now, I'm a big advocate and I've, I even tweeted it today. <laughs> you guys may have seen it where I said, guys, I said, time to get Jay Clayton out, out um, and put Hester Pierce, crypto mom, as the head here. As you can see, I uh, tweeted, they need to get Jay Clayton out and make crypto mom Hester Pierce their chairman of the SEC. One guy replied here and said, you know, you can get in trouble for statements like this. <laughs> and it's like, really, dude, uh, we are in the United States. We have free speech. So I quoted him the First Amendment there. And, and then some other person said, hey, this isn't China. So you're not you're not going to. Uh, quiet me or shut me down right this this is the united states we abide by the constitution here so um guys i'm hoping jay clinton changes his mind soon or they better kick him out the trump administration kick him out and put hester pierce as the chairman because she gets it that's why she's crypto mom and she's got a lot of great plans and proposals on how to um, not just give the green light but safeguard the, the asset class and protect investors as well. Um, and like I said, I think Brian Brooks is also trying to get into Jay Clayton's head here to get him to change, have a change of heart. Finally, guys, this is big news because of all the stuff that's been going on in India. 
um, even though there's some pushback, Indian government to offer, excuse me, not Indian government, Indian bank to offer crypto services across its 34 branches. Banks, credit card companies, uh, payment companies, just like we saw PayPal, they will all be offering crypto trading and custody service. For the first time, Indians will be able to take out a loan against cryptocurrencies. Indian Bank United Multi-State Credit Co. Operative Society is planning to expand its banking services to cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrency product. In collaboration with the crypto banking service provider Kasha, United uh, has established a joint venture dubbed Unicas that aims to provide both online crypto banking services and walk-in services across its 34 physical branches in northern India. Now, you may say, hey, that doesn't sound like a lot, but guys, you know what's going to happen the competition is going to heat up. No one wants to get left behind. This asset class is here to stay and it's just going to grow. So the early adopters, while they, it may be a bit of a struggle for them, they're going to have the first mover advantage. And if these smaller guys get in, you know, the bigger guys are going to eventually going to come in and everybody's going to be in, right? I think we all know how the competition and market and, and the free market works here. So this move by the United and Kasha comes amid India's uncertain crypto regulations while the Supreme Court of India took down the crypto banking ban but put in place by uh, excuse me that was put in place by the Reserve Bank of India in March most banks are still skeptical of providing services to crypto companies and individuals dealing with digital currency yeah that's going to change that's going to change cuz watch uh, this company here start making significant uh, profit off of it and as the asset class grows you're going to see um, uh, more of them decide to jump in. So Unicas will allow United account holders to integrate cryptocurrency wallets directly with their accounts. Customers will be able to directly buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple XRP, and Cash by paying either in cash or directly from their account. When Unicas launches, United will also allow its customers to take out loans against cryptocurrencies. That's happening here in the United States, of course. So this is very big for the folks in India. Should be pretty excited. Let's hope though the Indian government, they get their act together here and come to their right senses and uh, pass full crypto regulations, right? Because they've been kind of wishy-washy here back and forth all over the place. But as I stated earlier in the video, can't stop the asset class. Cannot stop it. Too late. Train's already left the station. You ever seen, guys, you ever seen those videos where people get stuck on the, the, the train tracks, right? At the crossing. And then Guess what? They can't do anything. The train just comes through and bulldozes whatever. If it's a truck, a car, whatever it is, it's getting destroyed and the train just keeps going. That's what's happening here. They can try to stop it. Ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. It's going to get destroyed, whatever roadblock they try to put up. So guys, what do you think about this news? Um, like I said, Trump administration here might start putting pressure on Jay Clayton. We may see XRP and digital assets get the clarity they need. And uh, this will unlock a lot of capital to come into the crypto market because guess what? There's a lot of tokens that folks want to invest in, like VeChain and XRP and many others, right? But um, some companies and investors don't want to touch it because of the security risk. So leave your thoughts and comments below. Share this video if you found it helpful. Hit the thumbs up button and I'll talk to you all later.